everybody. This podcast is proudly sponsored by CardsReleased.com. CardsReleased.com has been supporting the game since Opus 1. Use promo code CHOCOBROS to save 10% off your next order. Hello, 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 and welcome to another week of the CHOCOBROS. I am your host this week again, Zach Burrell. And I am Cody Snodgrass. And this week we are here to celebrate Zach's victory uh, this past weekend at his OQ. Uh, he's going to Nationals. Uh, where was the Helgi you actually held at? Uh, I was in Jacksonville at a place, I believe it was Java Game House. House spelled H-A-U-S. Okay. Uh, right. Actually, to be honest, if I had never been to Collector's Cash before, this would probably be my <laughs> favorite location that I've ever been to. So it's a it's a second place that's actually kind of close. It is a... Uh, it's not gigantic, but it has a lot of interesting tables and spaces in various like sizes and shapes. And in the back, they have a lot of uniform ones, which is where the tournament was held. They have a whole wall of just board games. It's a board game cafe. So, like, their entire wall is board games that you could just pull off the shelf and play on their tables. They have a whole stocked up, like, food and beverage, uh, like, diner setup. And then in the back, they have uh, two very long counter spaces of, like, every TCG, like, a card shop. So it's all of that in one. And it's, like, the most chill environment I've been to in a long time. It's awesome. Okay. Sounds pretty sweet. Uh, how many people were in attendance for this LQ? <laughs> uh, so it was 15. So okay. low, lower count, but that's all right. Um, I and mean, we had a uh, quite a few people who were experienced, so I still feel <laughs> good about it. Fair enough. Uh, now let's talk about the deck you chose. Oh, well, see, we talked about this deck last week because you just qualified for Worlds with the same fifty cards, and uh... <laughs> what? <laughs> it had to be Riku, right? <laughs> Uh, so we had talked about making some changes, uh, especially for my personal play style. I was thinking about a couple cards I wanted either a third copy of or second copy or shift the summons around a little. But in the end, I just decided Cody knows a lot more about ice than I do, and I should just trust that <laughs> your numbers were correct and that my decisions are based on my preferences <laughs> that don't have any sort of backing whatsoever. So I just went I with think, it. I think the deck changes we discussed were fine. Um, I had even changed the list. And then I'd also try to, like, really convince you not to play Mono Ice. Well, you like, told me to play whatever. Quite a, quite a bit. I feel like I was, like, against Mono Ice for a long well, time. you told me chat. Mono Ice wasn't a good choice for the LQ. You said I need to be a few steps ahead. But then you also told me, play what you think you, what was it, play play what you want like to play, want just play better than other people. Yeah, and most comfortable. Something like that. So I'm looking at Mono Lightning, Mono Wind, and Mono Ice were my three decks. They were, they were all saved up. They're all ready. I had them in front of me with a couple options for each one. And Mono Wind I felt good about just because it's super consistent, super powerful. It beats up on ice if people are playing it. Not like decidedly, but it definitely has strength no, against it. Yeah. Uh, especially if I'm playing one to two Yasmats or something, which I would have only played one, if any. But uh, Maga Sisters is really annoying for you. Uh, I say you, Mono Ice player. <laughs> um... <laughs> But, uh, yeah, and then Mono Lightning actually felt amazing. It was so fast, so powerful, and can just end games out of nowhere. But Lightning is a deck that I, because the guys are kind of little, I was nervous about getting board wiped a lot from Water Wind. And just because I don't know how to end games properly. Like, sure, I mean, you see the lines of, like, okay, I have Bahamut Zero, Dollar Field Swing. Or, okay, I have Diana Alba, okay, I'm going to dull two guys and swing. Like, there's those simple lines, but there's definitely some more complicated ones that I wasn't comfortable with me seeing, and also, like, when to break Sid Previa to free up backups for other backups or to do damage stacking with El Cid. Little decisions like that worried me. Uh, Mono win, similarly. Uh, I have notoriously misplayed a lot with Yuri, just getting way too greedy trying to do stuff, uh, leaving myself tapped, which, that's avoidable. Uh, if they have Emperor out and active on their turn, don't tap Yuri at the end of the turn. <laughs> But, uh, it's very true. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, and just Mono Ice is where I went immediately in the beginning. And after we had talked and you said, you know, play what you think you're most comfortable with, that was it. And uh, also what made me nervous was I saw four versions of Mono Wind that I was kind of playing around with numbers from each one and seeing what I liked. I got kind of a configuration, but then I saw the day of JFE was playing some spicy stuff. I'm like, uh, like the edges and things like that. Mm -hmm. I'm like, man, is that good? And like, well, I don't have the cards for that, but I see why he would do it. 
like this lost to this and i got super nervous i saw lightning everywhere and mono wind had lost to lightning the previous weekend and i i just was like all right i'm playing ice <laughs> <laughs> I just, i'm gonna go with my gut feeling that's why i went into the weekend wanting to play so i just went with it i think it was a pretty wise choice uh turned out all right for you yeah uh, so let's actually go. only one or two water wins at the event okay so let's go through uh some of your swiss rounds uh what sure. do you go up against first if you remember uh, round one was Mono Lightning, uh, so I was real nervous because I know that deck is pretty good against Ice if it just runs you over before you get fully set up. Um, but he was playing a version with like Rufus and uh, not Rude, but the other one, uh, Reno, to do like the 5k 5k combos. He was playing some other backup like Red Mage, which isn't doing a whole lot in that deck, I don't think, because like everything should just already have haste or ways to give it themselves haste. Uh, kind of like just the Evan Tan guy version. I, I trust hit that building or that deck building. Mm -hmm. uh, so when I saw that stuff, I was like, okay, it's not quite what I was expecting. He X death back a, um, uh, what's it called? The Astinian, the five drop Astinian. And okay, so it was a m much more slower version. Yeah, it was a slower version. So he got me to like maybe three damage or two damage. And then I just, he never untapped with anything again. Like he. I wiped his, uh, Ill like, Sephiroth, just popping Illua's shield for free, even without him being out of the hand. Eventually, I got to Colossia, discard it. Like, yeah, it wasn't it wasn't close. Um, there was one point where I thought he had the Illua special and was setting up for it, and he just had a dud, and the game was over. <laughs> but, uh... Okay. So that was round one. Uh, round two was Mono Ice Mirror against Jamie Grantham, a uh, member of Cards of Evil's, uh competitive team. Uh, he did worse on backups than I did. That was the match. So it definitely feels like if you're in that mirror and your opponent has one backup and you have two and then they have one and then you have three and they have one and then you have four, <laughs> the game's pretty <laughs> over by that point. Uh, he yeah, eventually pretty... built up again, but I, I just I slow burn, got him to like three damage or something while he was building backups and catching back up. And then by the time he got to five, I've been at five for a while and I just threat 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 slamming everything down orphaned like i uh, ended up 7-0 at the end okay. uh, i think that was just a really poor draw on his side uh he also got like name screwed like the two backups he drew at one point were the one he already had just one of those very unfortunate games um also helps that i went turn one harley pass he went turn one pitch two for duke lard pass and then i went top deck edward <laughs> one <laughs> so like it was fine so it's always a good feeling. <laughs> well, because I, I had Harley and then, like, I think Snow. So it was kind of an awkward... That was post-Mulligan. It was kind of just an awkward start. And I drew into Edward and another 3 CP backup. And I was like, okay, we're all right now. Yeah. Um, then in round three, I went against Firewind Cadets. It's the same deck that took second at the event. Listen, <laughs> I see your face. I know you play against it all the time on Untap. You've talked about it before. <sighs> I was nervous because <laughs> he was he, I was his only loss all day. He three won Swiss, only losing to me. Spoiler, I won the match. Uh, he got stuck on one backup, and I just kept his guys dull and frozen. And eventually, like Solera had two things, and Edward uh, not Edward the Emperor was insane because he would just attack, and then I'd you know blow up your ace. But like that deck does things, and then he played six copies of seven, which I disagree with, but definitely gets you like always has snake bite so like oh play orphan snake bite okay uh play play uh sephiroth snake bite like <laughs> so but also unfortunate for him he goes uh turn one seven pass i go turn one back up pass he goes attack with seven flip a zer dragon to ex reveal top card sid reigns oh <laughs> so that was that was very unfortunate also because it just lined up perfectly but when you see yeah. your the danger coming <laughs> when, uh, when you're 2-0 and you go up against cadets <laughs> yep and then when you're <laughs> in the grand finals and you're against cadets <laughs> which we'll get to yeah uh, all right so you beat you beat cadets yes i beat cadets uh fourth round was against mono lightning the regular hyper build of it um played by jen sedloff also a member of cards of evilies they were also 3-0 um yeah 
I had no business winning that game. Uh, there was a turn where I misplayed rookie move, uh, orphan on four cards or four ice characters because I had to do an early Sephiroth because I had no other plays. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so I didn't freeze the Illua like I was supposed to, nor did I freeze the. I think it was. I don't remember what the other card was. I think Diana or something. Uh, so then I took two damage that I should not have taken. Uh, putting me to five, or putting me to three. And then because of that, I also ended up on five, got really nervous. But there was a turn where I was able to turn around, started dulling freezing things, just went back up past. I was like, awesome, I get a free turn. Uh, I was stuck on like two backups for a while, eventually got a third, but it was largely irrelevant. But there was a turn where any single forward loses me the game. Uh, they top deck, backup, backup, had a backup already in hand, had to say pass, and I got to just swing, swing, game over. Like, any forward would have blocked uh, because I had uh, I was hellbent, so no cards in hand at the time, and they had three, so there's no way I was going to be able to dull freeze with Sephiroth, and they're on five damage, and I only had two forwards, and then 100% I was dead on the untap if they got to activate again. So just very variance lucked my way into that one, into 4-0. Uh, then top cut was uh, I found myself against uh, Water Wind, Pretty standard build, nothing really interesting. Uh, I think it, it was two copies of the big... No, one copy of the big Famfret, three small Famfret, then three Diablos, three Adolfo, so very standard. Uh, no Maga Sister, Spice, or anything. Two Veritas. Uh, yeah, no, nothing nothing special. Um, I Actually, no. I, the backups, uh, he had two copies of the Water Scholar that returns it forward to your hand. Okay. Which... So, so kind of similar to Kyle's build from Gen Con, it sounds like. Uh, it, I mean, that's the only other... There was no Thorden or anything. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, it was, it was just a Scholar. And then, like, one or two Merlwib, like, one Leonora, three Yuna, three Riku, a couple Meons, stuff like that. Okay. So that game was decent. I was nervous a couple times. Uh, early in the game, though, there was a turn where I went Sarah to make, to make discard then Sephiroth, make a discard two. Uh, again, I was on two backups, and my other cards were either name-locked or... Or my other cards, rather, were just name-locked, or I they just didn't seem good at the time. So I'm like, I'll put you down to one card. But... I, so I played Sarah, discard one. Played Sephiroth. He only discarded one, but neither of us caught it. So, past turn, he draws up, and I'm like, wait, how many cards do you have? And he said, five. I'm like, wait, I just made you discard three cards last turn. You had four. Uh, or, sorry, uh, he had four at the time. You had four. You discarded three. You should have drawn two. You should be at three cards. And he's like, what? We looked at the break zone, backed it up or whatever, and saw that, yeah, he had not discarded. Uh, so just called the judge to figure out how to resolve it. Judge had not a 100% how to deal with, like, what the like penalty for that is. Uh, but Sam was there and said, kind of brutal but i'll tell you what the real ruling is which is i get to see his hand and pick any card yep and it's gone so yeah. i got to take his lena special which was kind of relevant uh but like i'm not i neither of us caught it i'll say i think it's also a warning for both of you guys yeah and time, right? nothing happened like he started to play something when i noticed how many cards he had in hand and because mm -hmm. uh, I saw him card, I also checked on my turn because I, I only saw him put one card, but he was card flicking, and I only saw two cards. Okay. And, uh, and he, that's what he's supposed to be on. Or, so yeah, I guess it was five, make him discard three. Uh, but he actually had three, so when he dropped return, it was up to five again. Uh, so like, I feel bad about it, but like, come on, you, I mean, discard your cards. <laughs> so <laughs> we, uh, yeah, we had to do that, which felt bad, but I mean, the game was still close like the lena special was largely irrelevant at the time i think the only forward in the break zone was like a maybe a paint like a three cp search pain like and i could have made him just hit two veritas in hand when i saw his hand it was like two veritas lena meon which is already on the field and then like something else um so yeah and then i just gr uh, grinded that game out as that matchup goes uh then finals uh that was two one in that matchup also uh, i just got destroyed game two <laughs> uh, just no backups. Uh, at least not a good backup. Uh, 
uh, line. Stuck on three and got overwhelmed. Uh, last round, though, was against Cadets again. Uh, he 2 owed Mono Lightning, uh, played by Jen. <laughs> and I guess it wasn't even close. Uh, seven was snake biting like Alcids. And snake bited Kane, ACP Kane. Tell me that doesn't feel awful. <laughs> Lose the backup, <laughs> my guy doesn't die. <laughs> cool. Seems pretty good. <laughs> so. That, I guess that was pretty brutal. So against him again, uh, I mean, same deal. He got, he tried to be too aggressive because he was nervous about playing the long game. Pitch backups for forwards. Those forwards got frozen, and it's yeah, it. Yeah, I played against cadets last night, or not last night, two nights ago at locals. It was not a close game at all. <laughs> um, like that, the deck is just pretty bad <laughs> one uh one spot where he almost wow. turned it around though is he had the do special which does 4k for each cadet you have to kill one of my like ak's that was swinging i think it was a genesis but he had a dull seven so i just emperored it in response and mm. got to kill it uh the judge said hold on for a second made sure i could do that in combat it wasn't just during main phase i'm like yes i can <laughs> yeah uh, so kind of an expensive way but i mean if you dodge a special it's yeah i mean he dead that turn too or dead yeah. the following turn because uh, no cards in hand, well, no cards in hand after the special, one forward on the board. Right. Uh, so, so that yeah. was the... it. Was sounds easy, but <laughs> I tell you, man, that <laughs> that's aggressive. <laughs> it was snake, easy, and snake bites <laughs> annoying. All right. Yeah, I mean, um, I mean, uh, to be fair, I was extremely relieved to see that that was my matchup for the finals and not mono lightning. Yeah, uh, I know. I know so, you messaged me you're like. Hopefully, Cadets makes it in the grand final. <laughs> right, but like I, but I also feel bad because I don't want to root against Jen because Jen is a local and we play all oh, the yeah. time, and I want to see them do well. But competitively, yeah. I much preferred the other matchup. Yeah. I mean, they so. can only be one winner, so. Yeah, I was like, either way, it's coming to Tampa, and I actually made a prediction too before the event. I'm like, either I win, or Mono Lightning wins. That's right. And that was my prediction for the event, and that's almost what happened. All right. So um, how, does it, how does it feel to be qualified for nationals? Feels good. Uh, it's a big weight off my shoulders. I don't have to drive to Miami now if I don't want to, uh, which I love seeing Alejandro. That's a long drive. It's a Sunday LQ with a long drive. So I either have to take like the next morning off to just like sleep the night or, you know, drive four hours, play an event, drive four hours home. I mean, I could drive up the day before too, but it's still brutal to do it at night coming home. Um, but mostly okay. it feels good because this year uh, I did not have anybody blocking for me. So I just got to actually earn it, which feels a lot better. Because last year, I mean, I'm pretty sure I was very open about <laughs> how I, I got... Last year, last year you had an army. <laughs> you ever... You ever uh, have you seen Advent Children, the movie? The, yep. Yeah. So you remember the, the last scene where everybody's throwing Cloud up to go like hit Bahamut or whatever? Mm -hmm. like, that's exactly what happened last year with me at the Orlando LQ. It was just... I was... I was going to the top. People are throwing me, throwing me, throwing me, getting me up. Because I had, like, nine out of the 22 people there, like, blocking. Like, it was – but that, like, I felt like I deserved it because of, like, all my other tournament successes and just missing it barely every time. But at the same time, you want to win it yourself. Mm -hmm. So that's that's what happened this time, and it feels a lot better. All right. Huh? So now I'm looking yeah. for housing and flights and all that for nationals. <laughs> sounds pretty good uh hopefully one day this weekend i can i can queue for nets uh yeah, i was gonna say man uh your deck's pretty good at uh, queuing for events but yeah <laughs> you gotta, now you gotta get national. Yeah. hopefully i can win the small events with it uh, <laughs> uh but no i think hopefully is it the, we'll see is it the missouri the, lq the one you yeah, the, wanted this saturday <laughs> yeah my local will you have to win the missouri one right we, we fought for it yeah <laughs> <laughs> like I'd like to. It, it's it, it could be uh, pretty rough. There's some good competition out here, though. So uh, we'll see what happens. Mm -hmm. um, but outside of that, we had the Fire Crystal Cup in Europe, or in I guess it was Spain, right? Madrid. Yes. This past weekend as well, uh, which was won by Jamie Faulkner. Yeah, so he won uh, playing also a deck that you helped him on with Mono Ice, right? He made a whole post about it. Mono Ice. Yeah, I think I didn't help him nearly as much as. Uh, I would have liked to. Uh, we didn't really have a whole lot of time, to be fair. Uh, mm -hmm. We hadn't really 
got a whole lot of testing and I don't think we tested it all last week we just talked through messenger uh, but he crushed it uh, he made a few changes cut snow um, oh man I can't imagine playing that deck without snow snow is a yeah, busted card I think both versions are pretty good uh, it's not okay he bumped up Austin to three copies which I was that very I would happy prefer. with yeah yeah <laughs> You don't have to just rip it off the top of the deck. <laughs> um, but yeah, he uh, he won that. He had a pretty rough time. I know he lost to GFB in Swiss, was able to get some revenge in top eight uh, and kind of just make it through. Um, but yeah, big shout-outs to him. Congratulations. Uh, making the world's team again. I know he came in second last year, right? Yep. He was in the finals yes. against Alex. Yeah, so world is getting pretty stacked this year. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm very excited to be part of the group. Uh, I'll say it says something to, uh, you know, balance of the game and how, like, being competitive in practice actually pays off. It's all the people who arguably earn it. Like, everybody who's okay. grinding and grinding and practicing every week in and out. Like, mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a good testament. No, definitely. Uh, and then we got one more Crystal Cup coming up in North America. Uh, but before that happens, we have a ban, uh, which went into effect. <laughs> Uh, was about five hours ago. Which, by the way, our uh, did you see the title I gave our podcast from last week that only released like yesterday because I'm an idiot and was it, forgot to put was it, it up. Reek, was it Reek Who? Yeah, Reek Who? Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> ironically it enough, well, it, the 12 hours later. Yeah, yeah, she is gone. Um, starting September 13th, mm -hmm. I believe. Um, so uh, what, are, what are your initial thoughts on this? I understand that if you read the reasoning again, it's kind of like the Gesper ban, where it, it was not fun to play against. It did what it did more efficiently than intended, which seems to be the theme with a lot of the bans is like Gesper and Thaumaturge together just like when empty hands a lot faster than two CP cards deserve to. Like Sephiroth is okay, right? Like seven costs to get rid of two, and then you know, you, you also don't have a lot of cards. But like Thaumaturge and Gesper were an issue together. Again, I still on the fence about Thaumaturge, but Dataluma had an unintended powerful synergy with Cactor. Maybe they intended it to exist, but not to be as oppressive uh, with effects like Fina reactivating. Uh, I think might have been one of the death knells for it. Um, things like uh, like Layak and Yurian J being a splash card, like that caused issues. So it was just it was really efficient. Even if it wasn't broken, I still don't fully agree with the Dataluma ban. But Riku was in that same vein of yeah mill is a thing and it, you should be able to mill people out as a win con it's just a part of the game there's a bunch of standard units that deal with it but having only one card that makes that entire game plan work and the rest of the deck can just be protection and all the best control cards in the game i can understand why they think or why it's unfun and too consistent um in terms of being too powerful i mean if you look at the tournament results from the past two weeks where's wind water like, ice is crushing it. Model wind is Save crushing it. it. It's in a lot of the top spots or the top cuts. Um, exactly, and that I mean, so is Model Fire. Ugh. So is Golbez. Like, there's a lot of decks can top. <laughs> uh, and yes, at the beginning of the Opus, all the decks were, like, a lot of the top cuts were all water wind. But it was also the low hanging fruit of decks. It was like, oh, clearly pour them with all this stuff, and the deck kind of builds itself based on the previous Opus you know decks yeah. and just and, updating and i think early on in the meta it takes a while for people to just really start getting like finding out what decks work right so and, i think the wind water showing up early was kind of expected and i, I again mean, i agree that it was unfun for most people i'm i'm a freak and i enjoy those really grindy annoying <laughs> people say they're uninteractive but i think uh having removal and like having a deck that's just removal and then like your win con Seems pretty interactive to me, but that's a debate for another no, time, I guess. <laughs> super. It's very interactive. Um, but it's gone. We can't really say anything else about it. Um, I'm kind of bummed a little bit, but I think you just slide in the other two CP Riku. Um, and you probably go back to Yuri Chilinka, I'd imagine. Yeah. I'd that's what Alfred's really, saying. But Yeah, I, I really didn't see a reason why Yuri and Chilinka got booted out the door to begin with. Um, True. Well... To be fair, I, I haven't liked Jalinka very... for a while, but Yuri, I would play without Jalinka. Yeah, you could play. Uh, I don't know. We'll, we'll have to see. I'm sure the next tournament, uh, the top cut will have 
some version of the new Windwater. Um, mm-hmm. It's funny because like back in Opus Two, we used to debate. I don't know if I, you played back then. Yeah, um, I played back in Opus One. I don't, I don't know how many tournaments there were really back then for you, at least. Um, uh, Opus there, Two, I actually didn't play any tournaments because of locals ruining things and trying to fight me. And <laughs> people, are, oh, well, why, you, why they, are you playing the best deck? Maybe next set you'll play a worse deck. Oh. Like, no, I had that. Just I had that. Thing, you could just play the thing that beats me, because my friend beats was, me every tournament. <laughs> we take first and second. And... Was it cause, was it because you were playing Golbez? Oh yeah, I, I played okay, Golbez, <laughs> and my friend I'm played glad we... Earth Ice. <laughs> so Earth Ice back then wasn't amazing against every other deck. It was just decent, but like it crushed Golbez, and no, everyone else refused to play. They just want to play their whatever decks, and then yeah, these guys got very angry about it, and then. Um, I'm like you're the one like being angry, and they're like, "Oh, you want to fight? Like, what?" <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> and then yeah, uh, the we had a... and just went just putting a bow on that story. Uh, then Opus Two came out, and we were playing with Zemus, and they were adamant that Zemus could not produce CP. Uh, and I provided oh, wow. a ruling from Kageyama uh, saying like, "Yo, you can do this." And like, "Oh, I don't care about what a ruling says this and that." Like, it doesn't, uh, like Cosmos <laughs> says it can make CP, so clearly this one can't. And we all, but I missed the simple explanation of the rules say it dulls for its own element. That explanation <laughs> wasn't in my head. <laughs> but basically, they table flipped over that. I left the event because they were getting too belligerent, and I just never came back until it was three when I found the Tampa crew. Well, I'm glad that we both played Golbez and made a lot of locals salty about it. Um. Oh, it's fantastic. <laughs> But anyhow, one of the locals I, played stupid nine CP Bahamut though, and just blow me out. Oh, Gilgamesh Golbez, bye, <laughs> remove. <laughs> Damn it. Pretty good. <laughs> um, but back then there was a debate over which Riku to play, whether you play the Mill Riku or the Reactivation Riku, mm-hmm. and it was like a real debate. Like, I had friends that were doing like two one splits or playing three of the other one and not the Mill one. Mm-hmm. I always stood behind the Mill one, um, just because I used to mill people like. I've been milling people out, I feel like, since, like, when I was just playing in my apartment back, back in the day. Back in my day. day. <laughs> yeah, like, we're, we're old-timers now. I was milling um, people before you even had a twinkler. <laughs> yeah. The only game I've ever played against Muhammad was at Nats last year, and I milled him out, and that was, what, Opus 6, I think? Mm-hmm. Otherwise, I think he just crushes me. Um, but <laughs> he's going to be back with a vengeance with his mono water deck uh, yeah, with right. Riku gone. I think it was uh, Opus... Oh, what was it? Um, I think Opus... Five, I was playing a like dedicated water wind mill deck, but like, yeah, I had I had Riku and Nono, which was fun, but also just like all the thieves and five CP Valfour, just like bounce the field, replay my field, go, bounce the field, replay my field, go, and it would just mill people out that way. And then uh, when I could, I'd like party attack with three little dudes and like stack triggers on Riku and mill you four times, and then go to damage. <laughs> so that was fun, but it was janky. So uh, with with the ban in effect, what are some of the some decks that you think will emerge as top tier or will stay top tier? Uh, I mean, if we want to go for obvious things, Mono Water. Uh, like, yeah, uh, Valfor still kills Layla Viking. Uh, Fina He's still the wipes the board. They can play Midwoo if they want. But, like, they're not going to lose to drawing cards like they did before, which is the main issue with the deck. Like, being able to remove little guys is great. But the whole getting milled after drawing maybe 10 extra cards throughout the game, that's they couldn't survive. Uh, so now that's probably going to come back and be the... I'll bet that'll be the first deck people like really latch on to before they explore other options. Mm-hmm. Now, what about you? Because that's my first thought. I haven't had a whole lot of time to think about it. I just got home from work and then hopped right on here. So, Yeah, I think a lot of the decks you're seeing right now aren't going to go away. So your Mono Wind, your Mono Ice... Fire Ice, um, Mono Lightning even. Uh, it's very good right now. Um, I think we're going to see... I mean, the, 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 while you're think. thinking, the biggest question is what decks did we see disappear when this deck became big? Like We can work backwards from there too to try to think about it. Uh, but honestly... Out, <laughs> yeah, outside of anything. <laughs> Mono Water, it's kind of tough. Um, wind Water with like Layla Viking uh, hasn't been around. Sure. Um, Windwater Chalinka, for the most part, at least in North America, hasn't really been around. Um, well, you don't live near Alfred, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. Fair enough. <laughs> uh, he has never not played Yuri Chalinka since they came out. 
Except yeah, that you I played think, Ice Earth. Yeah, I think that deck is might even be like one of the top tier decks now. Um, but I think that's just because a lot of the hype is going to die down on this newer Windwater build. Mm -hmm. um, plus, I think the Yuri Jelica package is just better than 90% of it. <laughs> <laughs> well, Veritas is also very good, so I don't know. We'll have to see what becomes the best. Two one Yuri, one Veritas. Spicy takes. Oof. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to risk it. Uh -uh. I couldn't decide. I only play 50 ice cards. Um, <laughs> I think another deck that we haven't seen, at least I haven't seen a lot of lately, is Ice Earth. Mm -hmm. The deck didn't lose anything. If it gained quite a bit. Um, I think if I, I... So that's the deck I would have wanted to play had I had more time to figure it out after Gen Con, mm -hmm. but because I, I love Gabranth. And I know you have expressed mixed feelings or maybe even just pure negative feelings about playing Gabranth <laughs> in Ice Earth to find Sephiroth and other toys, but I think it sounds great. And all the decks I've seen people top with have Gabrants. <laughs> so That's I feel somewhat justified in my opinion, but just just make sure you pay four CP for the Gabrant. That's that's all we ask. <laughs> <laughs> Bowl in A. Alright. Uh, <laughs> 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 um, but outside of uh, the ban and the events this past weekend, RB uh, made a post uh, kinda in regards to some suggestions uh, for next season. Mm-hmm. Uh, so what are what are kind of your thoughts on that? Uh, so do you want, like more invites? I, I glanced over replies, but I didn't read in depth. So I'm just mm -hmm. gonna say things off like my thoughts. I know a couple of them are repeats from what I saw, but uh, some sort of point system tracking across all we'll call them sanctioned events. Uh, so not locals, but LQs, CCs, and other big events like that. Maybe even like the reunion, uh, petite cups if they exist again in the same form. Whatever has any kind of play into Nationals should have some kind of point system. What that exact breakdown is, I can't give you right now. But uh, scaling LQs by attendance. Uh, it should be thresholded similarly to how top cuts are thresholded. So, like, you get to, I think it's 17 players makes it... Or no, there's a 24 players is top eight. I'm not sure what the exact... I think it's up to the tournament holder it's not <clears> something not like, a... like that well they do have a defined system for it for all of like official square enix events but yeah they leave some things up to stores which okay that's another problem fix that make it standard but um i think we could probably yeah. go off of i've heard dragon ball super does one invite for every eight players i could see i would that. be fine i would be fine with like one invite and then another invite for 16 and then another invite for whatever it goes up to from there yeah, 24 um, 30 you can do it by eights yeah or you can do it by yeah. tiers which is like you know one two four eight sixteen that whole bracket so if it's one to sixteen player or one to fifteen players one invite sixteen to thirty two two invites thirty three plus three invites and maybe cap it at three because then that actually makes your third and fourth place matter right so they actually you could do a you they'd have to play each other kind of thing Mm -hmm. um, which would add just you know some, maybe some more excitement to the event. Uh, so people who lose to like the two just aren't dead and rely on Swiss tiebreakers. They get to play each other and kind of get that like real who's third and fourth. All right. Um, so yep, scaling LQs, point system of some kind. Again, I don't pretend to know the answer or have a perfect system, but that's what you know companies are for. Uh, <laughs> uh, was there another one I said? That's the first two right there. Okay. Those are the main two. Okay. You say some, and I'll say if that was something I had in my, on my mind. <laughs> well, my first suggestion, of course, was uh, Nationals invites for Gen Con. Oh, sure. <laughs> Any event that has a Worlds invite, uh, the Worlds player should be qualified. Not even just because it's you, and I'm biased. Like, it just makes sense. <laughs> if there's any event where a Worlds invite is on the line, at least top four for Nationals, like CC's. Like, that's fine. Yeah, I think even if it's called, if it's Gen Con, I think it should still be considered like a Crystal Cup. Or make Gen Con an event that is purely promotional and intended for large audience rather than just, like, hyper-competitive. I would almost be okay with that. Like, I like having it there, but to qualify for Nationals and or Worlds for that expensive of an event... I can understand why people might think that it should be more of a casual promotional event. Uh, what do you think about that? Uh, I think opinion. I think it's fine to do it 
the way they did it last year. I think last year was perfect. Well, there was no world's invite though. So maybe just Yeah, just national I think, would be fine too. Yeah. I think four Nats invites and a world's invite is fine if they continue to do world's invites like that. Mm -hmm. Um I don't want to see like the three buys come back from if you win a crystal. Yeah, buys should not be a thing. Like maybe um, one round. <clears throat> like if I would also like to see place, but not three. This kind of like a side note, but I'd like to see like Gen Con top eight get play mats. Mm -hmm. um, just because it really felt like a Crystal Cup. <clears throat> yeah, like, Gen Con like it's probably the strongest group of players I've ever seen in a room. <laughs> yeah, that, that was like, like, <laughs> insane. Besides like the top thirty-two of nationals, but like yeah, like it, it, it was that it level is, of yeah, it was very good. <laughs> Not many bad players in the room. Um, but yeah, I think. Gen Con's my obviously number one concern. I'd want to see scaling LQs, like you said. Um, Earlier I'd also information. What's that? Earlier information. So like, oh figure, gosh, yes. figure <laughs> shit out faster. Like, let us know formats. Let us know, like, okay, I'm willing to admit the draft is fine. Like, it's been tested a bunch of times now. Players who are good at the game are winning the events, which means draft is relatively balanced. Yes, there are cards that can skew it, but that's also part of the skill of knowing what to draft or what, you know, the whole argument. <laughs> <laughs> but allow players who don't want to play those formats to avoid those events by giving information way ahead of time. Like, imagine if someone was like, oh, I'm going to Gen Con only to play Final Fantasy and I'm buying these two days. And then they're like, one day's all draft, one day's all constructed. It's like, yeah, suck it up and play draft. Or if you gave the information out sooner, they wouldn't be put in that position. I think yeah. that, and like LQs, maybe sooner, like at least a full month, say, or to two months before the wave is announced, or rather, sorry, so say wave three was like, what, August and up, or second half of July and up? Is I that think it's it second half of July, yeah. We'll, we'll, say, well, I'll just say August for simplicity's sake. If, if it were August and September only, two months prior, announce what those are, so people can plan for it and travel. Yeah, I think LQs can also start way earlier in the yes, year. Yes, they should start probably in Petite Con. Well, like if you're winning an there's LQ, a there's like, a couple arguments with that. But I think if you're winning in an LQ in like September, October, like it feels bad turning around and buying a plane ticket at that point. I would say start sooner, yes, and stop sooner, yes, because you don't want to. Yeah, having the last chance qualifier is one thing. That's kind of like a gamble. You know, you fly out. You try to play in the last event with no qualified players and spike it and get into Nats. That's kind of like a that's fine. But Yeah, I'm okay with that. But like Like last year, yeah, I qualified for nationals and like two or three weeks later was nationals. And that was I mean I was yeah. going anyway. But that's not a good argument for why it's like, oh you're going anyway, so why would you complain? It's like, well I shouldn't have been I should that shouldn't be a situation. <laughs> so Now now do you think all of the Crystal Cup should have draft for the top cut? Or you think they should do it how they did this year, where it was like a few? I think they did like three of one way and four of the other. Uh, I'll give the cop out answer of depends. I mean, <laughs> if Nationals has draft, which I'm assuming it does at this point, um, and we were told that there's going to be some kind of a special something interesting format wise for Nationals, which again, we should know about because it's like two months from now. But anyway. Um, Yeah, they should probably have draft. Draft being top cut single elim, I don't like that because that's what they were, right? Or were they Swiss? No, it was, it was four rounds of Swiss. They were Swiss. Okay, never mind. I and then cut to top eight. Out of the top thirty two. Okay, as long as it's Swiss again, that's fine. Uh, yeah. Having single elim draft. Whew, not fine. no, it was single single elim construction or constructed for like Tampa. Uh, um, I don't even remember the other two LQs. I think it was Tampa, Toronto, and one other one. Oh, uh, here's another small one that kind of matters, but uh, scaling top cuts for Crystal Cups. Because they were all flat 32, right? For day two? Or, or were some yes. of them 16? Like, if you have 30. a 60-person event, it better not be 32 people top cut. More than half the field should not make day two. I think that's what Toronto was. I think it was like 65 players... 32 people in the top technically that's more than half but or less than half but yeah no which it's... which i'm still fine with because like the top cut was still stacked at that well, event. sure but that's because the people who are considered in that population of stacked players are the ones traveling to all these events anyway like that's fair it, I, I do like more the than idea half the field should never be in a top cut ever 
I don't know. I do like the idea. Uh, I think it was because the store size, uh, which is another thing we can go into. Um, True. Better venues. Yeah. I think I think saying top thirty-two for all the Crystal Cups is fine. Um, but what but if how you, do you feel? what if for some reason like it's in a crazy location? A lot of people end up not going for some reason. Not that that's going to happen, but and there's fifty people. Top thirty-two. I'm, like, I'm fine with it. <laughs> I mean, yeah, you're fine with it if you're there. It's you like, should, oh, you, I, you, I just don't lose two games. Come. You still have to come in top four of those 50 players or win if you're trying to get to Worlds. Um, For sure. And and yes, there's the argument of, oh, we'll just keep winning. Clearly, it was an easy field. It's like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but how do you feel about, uh, like this year, they did a lot of the Crystal Cups. Almost all of the Crystal Cups were at local stores. Uh, I Oh, Crystal Cups. Um, if the store is like Collector's Cash and can hold the capacity that is like hundreds of people <laughs> well, we'll say deserving of a crystal cup right like crystal cup we want to be over like 100 people it should be a premium giant it's it's our giant events each year besides nationals uh, pinty cups kind of um yes fine but if it's like a coffee shop <laughs> which i know i don't think that happened for a cc right like what was the probably the no. smallest venue toronto toronto i i yeah. sorry so i wasn't there like the fire cup here at sunshine sunshine's a relatively large store that can i think it can seat at least 100 people like we had like what 70 they had more tables they could have set up and more space so like they could at least have that many so that's yeah fine. it was pretty it was pretty packed in there but it was still doable yeah. um <clears throat> but like i think harry tarantula in toronto they had a cap at 64 they raised it to 65 i think because only one other person signed up after that yeah um but I think something that small is kind of pushing it. I know it would suck to have to buy like a convention ticket or yeah, like I have don't to plan know around like what the reluctance is to just like rent out a airport hangar. Just like <laughs> it's like I've said this airport. before. I don't care what it looks like. Just let lots of people play. <laughs> yeah, just have six foot white tables and yeah. some crappy chairs, and we're good. Oh, uh, maybe get some okay chairs, but <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, like just. Or like I think rent out like a ballroom type thing, like they do for nationals. Yeah, there's like that can hold 200 people. They... Yeah, we have ballrooms there's in solutions. every state in the country. Like, yeah, I've been to plenty of like regionals. I, I saw. Oh, sorry. I've been to plenty of regionals for Yu-Gi-Oh, where it's just at like a Holiday Inn ballroom. Yeah, and, it's and I mean, it's sure, like two or three hundred, four hundred. Oh yeah, three hundred, pretty yeah. much. Which, least. to be fair, we're not going to get more than 200 people at a CC. I'm not expecting that. Well, it could. I mean, we're on the we're Maybe on the California, up. But... We're on the up. So. Oh, I yeah, but like, are two hundred people going to go to Toronto? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Those I'd like to think so. So. <laughs> so. That's that's what I mean. Like, the money's a real issue. I and I get RB posted at some point in that thread. I saw something about a budget. I understand. Mm -hmm. Budget is a concern. Why is it such a concern? <laughs> like what? Like I wonder what, where that budget, why it's cut off so. Because if if what we like. Are we to assume that everything that's happened this year is capping out the budget? If so, why isn't it a little higher? Because <laughs> it yeah. seems like if the game is growing at the rate that it appears to be, there should be more profit, more inflow of whatever, invest back into it, continues to grow, and game, you know, that ball continues to roll. Uh, again, maybe I'm just, like, way too head in the clouds. I don't understand what's going on, but I feel <laughs> like... What was the other thing in there it was take away pricing from LQs to fund other things. It's like, really? I don't, how much, how much money is being spent on the LQs yeah, pricing? I, I don't, like a lot of two it's pieces, just like production that's yeah, already two happening. Two pieces of printed cardboard. Um, one black play mat. The play mats the, are covered by two people's entry. Maybe three. I'm sure. The store is giving out packs, but again, if, here's the other thing that's that's if up you, to the store if well. you could like give us like if we could pay the same entry to all these events and just not get intro packs and somehow that makes the prizes better i'm fine the intro packs are like fun but i don't go there for the intro packs i go there to you know play for prizes so if like we could get rid of like entry pricing and the stores could get better like prize support for us because you know the money just pays for it that'd be sweet yeah or, or just more prizing to like if you make top 32 or something like that I would um, like to see like, whatever the top cut is. Everybody in top cut gets something. Yeah, even if it's like four or five packs. Like, <laughs> like a structure I've liked to something. see is everybody in top cut gets something. 
next tier up of top cut whether that's 32 to 16 16 to 8 8 to 4 whatever it is that next tier gets their money back essentially and then everything about that profit like in price. yeah, in price. yeah. <laughs> and then the rest of them profit that's like that's the structure i've seen work for most events in my trading card game history <laughs> uh some sometimes okay if you're at like a magic gp and there's a thousand players okay the whole top cut's probably gonna profit <laughs> we're not talking about that scale of events here we're not we're not quite there yet yeah, uh, we're, not, we're not there yet hopefully hopefully one day though um, um and then nationals like i've always said somehow spring for a bigger venue if that means siphon some value out somewhere i'm fine like make nationals blah. <laughs> yeah there, there's much bigger ball there's bigger ballrooms in the hotel that we go to you're like We've a broken record <laughs> yeah it's like like we're in the small ballroom but under this ballroom is a ballroom that can hold double the amount so it's like <clears throat> yeah and let's again, get that one i will always say i understand there's things i don't know these are just all my suggestions and things that I value. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Um, I value yeah. function over form almost exclusively in my life. So <laughs> <laughs> I would rather do or have, like, more capabilities than, like, have something aesthetically pleasing or whatever else. That's fair enough. Um, but, yeah, I think that just about wraps us up for this week. Uh, anything else you wanted to touch on before we sign off? Uh, I don't think so. I think that that's, that's pretty good. Okay. Well, we have been the Choker Bros, guys. I'm Cody Snodgrass. I'm Zach Burrell, and we will see you next time.